All right, so let's go ahead and go over. Remember, we're learning the Beatitudes, so we're learning our first one this week. One second. So let's go ahead and go over our first one. Matthew 5, I mean, our first one was blessed are the poor and spirit for the, is the kingdom. All right, so Matthew 5 for this week. Matthew 5. Blessed are those who mourn, for yeah. they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. 5, 4. Yep. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and go over our lesson today. So yesterday we discussed how I told you guys that Jesus is, you know, he's now out with his public ministry. He has his 12 disciples that are working alongside him in ministry. And so Jesus at this time was known as a great teacher. A lot of times whenever anyone heard he was in their city, they would often rush to where he was so they could hear him preaching. They could hear his words. You know, they could receive from him. And so Jesus was in Capernaum one day and that's exactly what happened. A bunch of people went to this this house where Jesus was preaching. Now, there were four men who had a friend, and their friend, unfortunately, was paralyzed. We don't know how he became paralyzed, but he was paralyzed, and he could not move. He couldn't do anything for himself. And the four friends, they wanted to help their friends some kind of way, right? No doctor could help, none of that. But they knew that they heard about Jesus, and they said, he's special. I know there's something he could possibly do to help our friend problem is their friend wouldn't be able to get to jesus on his own but that didn't stop them from bringing him to jesus so the four men got together they picked him up on his mat and they said we're going to carry him all the way to where jesus is and that's what they did they picked their friend up and they carried him all the way to the house where jesus was teaching now they didn't even know if jesus could do something or not they just said we believe he can there's something special about him and they were like there, there's just something somewhere he can do some way he can do something so they bring their friend but when they arrive at the house remember the house was crowded they couldn't get through the door they couldn't even get through a window because it was so many people that were in the house listening to jesus teach but they still didn't give up they had a lot of faith and they had a lot of a belief that if they would just get him there they would be able, he would be healed. He would be better. So they go and they they decide, you know what? They say, let's go on the roof. We're going to tear a hole through the roof. And that's what they do. They climb on top of the roof. They start to dig back through the roof, peeling the layers of the roof. And finally they peel a hole. They tear a hole big enough where they were able to lower their friend down. And not only did they lower their friend down, but they lowered him down right in front of Jesus. They lowered their friend down right there at the feet of Jesus. And so everyone is sitting around shocked because not only did they tear a hole through the roof, but then they lowered this man down as well. And so they looked and they were like, wow, that's amazing. And so they lowered him down right at the feet of Jesus. Jesus looks at the man and he has compassion for the man. And Jesus tells the man, he says, son, your sins are forgiven. And now that's not necessarily what they went for, right? They really went for him to get healed. But Jesus knew that his soul need was greater than his physical need. And remember, the religious leaders are there. So when they hear Jesus say this, they don't even say it out loud. They start to think to themselves, who is Jesus to forgive sins? How can he forgive sins? Put it up. Only God can forgive sins. What, what is he doing? How can he? And so they didn't even say this out loud, but Jesus, knowing the thoughts that we think, because he's God, he knows everything about us. He says, is it easier for me to tell him his sins are forgiven or for him to rise up and walk? He didn't even give them a chance to answer. And so he said, and then Jesus tells the man, rise up, pick up your bed and go home. And instantly the man who was paralyzed could not move, couldn't do anything. It's like all of the stiffness left his body. He was now back to normal and he was able to. He got up, picked up his mat, and he literally went home. And so that was a miracle. Everyone was like, wow, that's amazing because this man was paralyzed. He was paralyzed, right? And just in that second, the moment he met Jesus, he was changed. And so his friends were right, right? 
They knew that if they would bring him before Jesus, something could happen. And something, in fact, did happen. Their friend was healed instantly in that moment. So Jesus is now, no, now people see him as a miracle worker, right? Because that was a miracle. It was something extraordinary that happened. Paralyzed people weren't getting healed like that. And to see Jesus do it just by words, he didn't even touch the man, nothing. He just said it and it was done. And everybody's like, this is amazing. This is amazing. So word starts to spread that not only is this Jesus a great teacher, but he can perform miracles, amazing miracles. So word is getting out and everyone is starting to hear. So man, maybe I could be healed from this. So it gave people hope, right? People who felt like they will be sick or a certain way forever. When they learned about how Jesus could do miracles, they, they had some hope. So there was a pool in the city of Jerusalem and it was a pool and it, it, it was called the pool of Bethesda. And so it meant house of mercy. So they had five porches and every single day, people who were sick, who were lame, blind, who were crippled, who were paralyzed, they would go and sit on those porches by the pool of Bethesda every day. And you might say, why were they doing that? Why would they go and sit there every day? Well, there was this word, that was this rumor, I guess you could say, that an angel would come and stir, meaning touch the waters in the pool of Bethesda. And when the angel touched the waters of the pool of Bethesda, anyone who jumped into the waters would be healed. So every day those sick people would go waiting outside i mean waiting around the pool waiting for the angel to come they didn't know when the angel would come or if the angel would even come at all but they had hope and they believed that one day the angel would come and they would be able to jump in the water and they would be healed so every single day these people would go and wait by the pool every day some of them were there for years just waiting waiting for an opportunity to jump in the pool when the angel came Unfortunately, the angel did not come, but the people still were there every single day, just waiting at the pool of Bethesda, hoping one day they would be able to jump in the water to get healed. So there was a, this is a Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is a day of rest. We talked about that already. And so there was a man who was at the pool of Bethesda and he hadn't been able to walk for 38 years. So again, we don't know what happened just like the other man. We don't know what led to him not being able to walk but he could not walk. And for 38 years, he couldn't walk. And he was one of those who would go and wait at the pool of Bethesda every day, just hoping that the waters would be stirred and that he would be able to jump in the waters when it happened. And so he was waiting just like everyone else. Now, the problem is though, since he can't walk, it would be kind of hard, right? For him to get to the pool, but he would still go every day waiting. That's about to change because one day Jesus comes and he walks along the, shore, the pool of Bethesda. And Jesus looks out and he sees all of the people that are sick and how they're just waiting for an opportunity to jump into the water so they would be healed. Jesus saw this and he saw the man in particular who had been lame for 38 years. So Jesus walks up to the man and he tells the man, he says, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be hold, whole? And the man is like, well, he says, I can't. He was like, I don't have anyone to help me to get into the water when it's troubled. When the angel comes and touch it, I'm not going to be able to do it by myself. And I have no one to help me get to the water. He was like, I don't know what, I don't, I, I don't know. I can't be healed. I would like to, but I can't. And so Jesus looked at the man and he simply said, stand up, roll up your mat and go on home and that's crazy right because the man can't stand up right he can't get up and jesus is telling the man stand up roll up your sleeping mat and go home and this was like hmm. but guess what happens just like with the other paralyzed man guess what happened guess what the man does stands up rolls up his mat and starts to go home he was uh, he was another one who was instantly healed in that moment, right when Jesus spoke the words, he was healed. He was cured from all of his sickness, 
all the stiffness in his legs, his legs unable to know that all went away. And the man literally stood up in that moment. He couldn't walk for 38 years. And in this one instant, all of that went away. Now he can walk again. He can move again. And so this is amazing. And so he does, and he looks at Jesus, but he does what Jesus says. He picks up his mat and he starts to go on. So as the man is walking, as he's walking, like he can't even believe that he's actually walking, that he's been healed. He's rejoicing, praising God because he's like, I'm healed. I couldn't walk in now. I came to the pool of Bethesda dragging my legs. And now I'm leaving the pool of Bethesda walking. And he was so excited. He was so happy. And so the religious leaders, they see the man and they see him carrying his mat. And now if you remember, I told you, what day was it? Sabbath. It's the Sabbath. Now during the Sabbath, there was, there was a day of rest, but the Pharisees, the religious leaders, what they did was they added their own rules and laws on top of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was commanded by the Lord. It was a day of rest, but the religious leaders decided to add their own rules to what God said, right? And we already know when a man adds rules to what God said, that's never going to be a good thing, right? Not at all. God already makes it clear what he says in his word. We follow his word. But sometimes people like to add their own thing to God's word to make people do things the way that they think it should be done and not the way that the Bible simply tells us to do it. So during the Sabbath, the religious leaders, they had a ton of laws on top of the Sabbath. So they would say you couldn't work, you couldn't pick up things, you couldn't do anything on the Sabbath, basically. So when they see the man walking and he's holding his mat, they were like, what are you doing? You can't work on the Sabbath. You're breaking the law by holding your bed. That was their rule. That wasn't. And Jesus, you think he's going to break his own his own law? No, right? Anyway, so yeah. So the man was like, what do you mean? He was like, the man who healed me told me to pick up my mat and to go home. And they said, who would tell you to do that on the Sabbath? Who would tell you to pick up something on the Sabbath? They were like, who would say that? Who would do that? Who would break our Sabbath? And so the man, though, he didn't know who healed him. He didn't even know who Jesus was. Because when Jesus told him, stand up and walk, he just walked away. He didn't even ask, who are you? Where are you from? None of that. So he was like, I don't. He was like, I don't know who healed me. He says, the man healed me and he told me to pick up my mat and go home. And that's what I did. I didn't ask him his name. I didn't know who he was. He just healed me. And so the religious leaders, they were like, hmm. They were trying to figure out who was it that told this man to break the Sabbath? Who was it? They just couldn't figure it out. So a little time later, the man, Jesus had looked for this man and he found him in the temple where he was going to worship God. And so when Jesus saw the man, he says, listen, you're well now. You're healed. You can walk. He says, but make sure that you don't sin like you did before or something worse would happen to you. And so Jesus was telling the man, listen, you're healed. You're better. But don't go back to a life of sin. Now you should serve me because of the healing that took place in your life. Now you should serve me. Now you shouldn't go back to the old ways of sinning, going back to that old thing. No, now you need to follow me. You need to do, you know, things my way. And so when Jesus told the man this, the man realized that this was Jesus and that this was God who healed him. And so, of course, the man, when he hears this, he's like, yes, yes, I'll do that. And he believed in Jesus, got his sins forgiven. And now he was, um, he's now one of God's children. So he was healed, but now his soul is healed. He, his sins are forgiven. and so. Whenever the man realized who it was, he went to the religious leaders and he told them, he said, it was Jesus who healed me. Jesus of Nazareth, that's who healed me. And so the religious leaders, when they heard this, they were not happy. They were like, Jesus is a Sabbath breaker. He's breaking the Sabbath. They were like, who does he think he is? Not only is he telling people that he's going to forgive their sins, but he's also breaking the Sabbath. Who is he? Now, keep in mind, guys, he's not breaking the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made by the Lord, right? And God is following the Sabbath in the way that he's supposed to. They added those laws and rules in addition to the Sabbath. They were the ones who said, oh, this, oh, that. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. Legalistic stuff. They were the ones that did that. 
And so, so they go to Jesus and they're like, who do you think you are? They were like, how are you breaking the Sabbath, telling people to pick up their mat? And Jesus says, listen, he says, my father is always working. He's always doing good. And that's true, right? If we pray and ask God for something now, will he do it? Yes. If we pray tomorrow morning and ask God, will he do it? If we ask him in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning, will he do it? Yes. God is always working. He never takes a day off. He doesn't say, oh, well, I'm off this weekend. I'm not going to answer prayers this weekend. God is not like that, right? God is always working. When we go to him in prayer, no matter what time of the day, what day of the week, what month, what season, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. If we go to God, he will do it. He will handle the situation. And so that's what Jesus said. He says, my father is always working. Even on the Sabbath, he's working. He says, listen, you can't tell, you can't tell me that I can't work on the Sabbath when my father, who I am doing his work, works on the Sabbath. And when they so when Jesus said this, they were even more upset because now Jesus is calling God his father. And so they were like, your father? They were like, what do you mean? Are you trying to say that you're God's son? I mean, he is. So yeah, he, he, he technically is. And so they were like, you break the Sabbath. You tell people you can forgive their sins. And now you're sitting here and telling us that God is your father? You're saying that you're equal with God because he's your father, but he was, he a hundred percent was God's son. And he a hundred percent was, this was God as well. And so they were upset. And at this moment, they were like, we got to get rid of him. We got to get rid of him because he's going to cause people to turn away from our way, the truth, our way. He's going to cause people to turn away. And we don't want that. They were like, we got to do something about this Jesus. Because now he's he's getting out of hand. Now he's doing too much. We need to fix this. But this didn't stop Jesus, right? Because like he said, my father is always working. Even if somebody has a problem with it, my father is always working. And so this did not stop Jesus at all. He knew what they were plotting. He knew what they were thinking. But he continued to do what he had to do. Performing miracles, teaching the word, doing what he had to do. And so this, both of these men were paralyzed, the one we talked about yesterday and the one today, and Jesus healed them despite anything. And not only did he forgive and heal them, but he also told them that he forgives their sins, right? So in addition to the healing, he also made sure that their souls were saved as well. Amen. All right. So that's our lesson today, guys, on the pool of Bethesda and how Jesus healed the man who couldn't walk for 38 years. He healed him the man was instantly healed. And that's the miraculous thing, how they're instantly healed. And um, the man is now able to you know, move around and walk. And, you know, and Jesus, like Jesus told him, don't go out and sin again. Now you serve me. And that's what the man would do. Okay. All right. That's our lesson for today. So tomorrow's lesson. Remember, he's making the religious leaders mad. He's going to make them even more mad on tomorrow with our lesson we'll discuss as well. Okay. All right, guys, that's it for Bible this morning. I'll see y'all later for our Zoom. Okay. Bye-bye. You have a question, Avaya?